Hey everybody, welcome to the video. NASCAR is heading over to the Lone Star State this weekend to take on its first road course race of the year as we tackle the Circuit of the Americas, aka Coda, for 20 turns and an elevation climb of around 130 feet. In turn one, when you see this track, looks pretty impressive on television. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of road course races in general, but the way this slide is setting up, I'm actually getting a little bit excited for it. And as far as DFS goes, they actually were pretty solid for me last season, so hopefully that can translate into this season as well. And the way these next-gen cars have raced so far, I have enjoyed all the races, even the ones that you know could be potential snoozers like Mount and a Half Tracks or Auto Club or even Atlanta. The things they have done this season has made the racing quite enjoyable. And the new faces we've seen up front leading laps and even picking up wins like Chase Briscoe, Ross Chastain has been a breath of fresh air this season. But anyway, we are here talking Coda. We have the Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix stick place on Sunday, March 27th. And if you are brand new here, my name is Chris Pinnell. I break down the NASCAR DFS slate each and every single weekend on this channel. Let's go live on Sunday mornings, answering any questions you may end up having. And I work for Awesomeo doing the live before lock shows on Sunday afternoons. And I write an article over on their site as well if you ever want to check those out. And if you do end up enjoying today's free content, all I ask in return is if you can leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out whenever I post new content. And leave a comment down below agreeing, disagreeing with any of the takes I may have, or if you just want to tell me hi or I suck, you can certainly feel free to do just that. And you guys have been crushing the likes each and every single weekend, so if we can get 350 plus once again, I would truly appreciate that. And if you want to go the extra mile and support the channel even more, link down below for the Patreon. We get to get you access to a lot of extra content, not just the free video previews you see here over on the YouTube. Got the entire NASCAR model optimizers, ownership projections, which I currently believe are the best in the industry, projections, data sheets, power rankings, which are algorithm based, articles, prize picks projections, vandal projections, the Discord community that's active 24 seven. And the best thing about it is that if you do wanna sign up this weekend, it will be free for you because we're at the end of the month, I don't want you guys to get double charged. So I will refund one of the charges assuming you do say signed up on next month. And next month we have baseball starting up. So lots of extra content coming out. I do think you'll enjoy it because if you do like the free stuff, just a lot of extra stuff that I think will become beneficial to you when making your fantasy NASCAR lineups or MLB lineups, whatever it may be. And as always, I got to mention the sponsor of the show, Price Picks. They do make these possible. You can use code CPEN to get a free instant deposit match bonus up to $100. No strings attached. It is free money. Use it to your advantage. So head over to PricePicks.com. Use the link down below. And really quick, I would like to mention the live stream this weekend, same as usual, around 11 a.m. Eastern. Come in, ask all the questions you want. Be more than happy to have you. And as always, the DraftKings contest that I host each and every single week. There's a bit of a change this weekend where it's now a league. So when you join this weekend, it should put you in a league. It'll send out an automatic invite each and every single weekend where the new slate opens up. So if you want to join, it'll make it easier for just about everybody. But if you want to join the old-fashioned way, you can hit the comment down below. I will have it in the pin section. Just hit the link, take it to Twitter, and you can join the contest. Or you can comment your DQ's name down below. I'd be more than happy to send you an invite. I will accommodate your needs no matter which way it is. But anyway, we are here talking the Echo Park Automated Grand Prix at the Circuit of Americas, aka Coda. This is our first road course race of many this season. It's just over three miles in length. We have 20 turns, a pretty high elevation in turn one. We have 68 laps, which is just under 50 total dominator points, which basically means dominators aren't really going to be that important this week. And yes, it'd be nice to have the guy that leads a good chunk of laps and then finishes in the top five, but we're mainly focusing on finishing position in place differential upside because the way road courses work, there's so many guys taking different strategies where no one's going to be up front pretty much for the entire race, and there's just not enough dominator points to really even warrant having to worry about dominators making a dominator group. So mainly just focus on place differential finishing position, kind of similar to what we had last weekend, just a lot less laps to have to worry about guys grabbing dominator points. And if you want my overall thoughts on the pricing this week, and it's pretty soft all around, I figured DraftKings would do this with a lack of laps that we have. So you can build some pretty good looking lineups and you have a lot of overall added flexibility. And the way qualifying shaked out, there's definitely some pretty fun plays on this slate. But let's start up top with the man Chase Elliott, $10,500. He is starting in 12th. He's the odds on favorite to win this race. I mean, deservedly so. It's Chase Elliott at a road course. The guy's as money as it gets. At the five technical road courses last year, excluding the Robles, had an average finish of 2.0, which is absolutely insane. Had top five finishes in each and every single race. And if you're looking at the road course races overall last season, a seven race sample size, the most DraftKings points per race, the best average finish, not the best running position behind Kyle Larson in that aspect, but still right up there with them. 
had two wins, five top fives, and one of the best drive ratings. And if you expand this to his career arc, we're talking 19 career cup races at road courses, the most DraftKings points per race, the best average finish, the best running position, the best drive rating, seven wins with the second guy, with wins being Martin Truex Jr. and Kyle Larson, 11 top fives and the most laps led per race. So I have nothing bad to say about Chase Elliott. I'm hoping him getting a P30 in practice lowers his ownership a little bit. Like I am not concerned about that whatsoever. I don't care if he was dead last in practice. It's Elliott a road course. He's gonna be fine over the course of an entire race. Starting 12th, he gets some extra added PD. It's not that hard to fit him in at 10,500. I would play him in cash games in tournaments and I would try to be overweight in pretty much any aspect. Absolutely love Chase Elliott. Kyle Larson, $10,400. He is starting right beside Larson in 13th. He's the second odds on favorite to win this race. Both these guys have some pretty steep odds, but they were the two best at road courses last season looking at them last year. Larson actually did have the best running position, the best drive rating, and the most wins and the same amount of top fives as Chase Elliott. I mean, just to put it simple, he's a very similar play to Elliott, although if you look at the career numbers, Larson has not been as good as Elliott at road courses. He really kind of just took the next step last season, which... My only concern here would be that Elliott by far had the best car last season. And it seems like this year so far, it's a small sample size, but I don't think he has quite the edge that he had last year. So maybe he won't be as dominant at road courses this season. So I would personally prefer playing Elliott over Larson. They're both very good plays. I do think Larson will be a little bit lower owned, but if I had to pick between the two, I would side with Chase Elliott, even though he does have you one less PD spot. We both are definitely very solid plays. And Kyle Busch, like these are kind of like the three same plays here. Elliott's kind of in his own tier, but they're all kind of grouped as similar plays and projections really aren't that too far apart. We have Kyle Busch here, $10,200. He is starting at 15. So once again, you get some extra added PD. Was P1 in the single lap in practice. We only had, what, seven drivers that ran five laps. So we don't have much practice data. And I hate to put too much into practice because again, we couldn't turn too many laps because it's a road course. We only have a limited amount of time. But that might bump his ownership up a little bit. But he is good at road courses. Tied for the third best odds to win this race with Martin Truex Jr. But hard enough to like Kyle Busch. He was very good at the technical road courses last year. Wasn't able to pick up a win. Uh, Chase Elliott and Larson kind of stole all those. But he did have four top fives and five top tens at road courses last season. He's been good at them his entire career. And it seemed like he had a fast car in practice. They end up spinning out. But I see no reason not to like Kyle here. And the only problem is... You're playing Elliott, you're playing Larson. It's hard to get a cow push as well. So I might go a little bit lower on just because those two are going to pick up some ownership. And you have some chalkier PD plays in the 9K range. But nonetheless, I do think he's a good tournament play if you can't get there in cash games. And rounding out the 10K group, we have Ryan Blaney, $10,000. He qualified in the pool. Seems to have a fast car this weekend. Did hit the wall in practice. Didn't seem to affect his car. The problem is, like I said, I'm not worried about dominator points and... I can see the guys that are priced right above him finishing better than Blaney when it's all said and done. I'm not really worried about any of the laps he leads early on. So I can't find myself getting to too much Blaney. It does hurt me to say that. The guy's a fine road course racer, but you know, looking at last season, he had one top five of road courses. For him to be optimal, starting in the pole at a road course with only 68 laps, he basically has to win the race or just hope that Bush, Larson, Elliott all suck and they just don't end up in the optimal lineup. And I think the chances of that are slim. So if you want to take a very heavy underweight or even a fade approach on Ryan Blaney, like a complete fade, I would not be against that. It could burn you if you led laps, like a large chunk of laps and won the race, but I think the chances of that happening are pretty slim. I'd rather take my chances on some extra added PD with Elliot Larson and Kyle Busch in a similar price point. Dropping down to the 9K range, we have Denny Hamlin, $9,800. Starting in the eighth spot, it's been a very tough season for Hamlin this season. Just seems like he can't finish a race, but was pretty good at the road course races last year. Was top three in average running position right there with Chase Elliott. Did a four top fives and five top tens. Over the course of his career, he's been a fine road course racer. The only concern I have is that he just has not been able to finish races this year. I know that's completely luck-based some of the time. And the one was his fault where he downshifted going into the pits. But starting in eighth, he's kind of an interesting tournament spot. Not a guy I'm going to get a ton of exposure to, but I think he's playable nonetheless. But I'm not in love with it. I would rather play Martin Truex Jr. here, just $100 cheaper. And he's starting nine spots further back, so he gets an extra safety, and he's got the third best odds to win, tied with Kyle Busch, his teammate over in Vegas. I mean, you know, Truvix, over the course of his career, has been amazing at road courses. Kind of took a step back last season. Did have some bad luck in some race. It was still able to grab a couple of top fives, but to expand that to his career arc, the guy has been absolutely phenomenal at road courses. I mean, one of the best running positions, one of the best drive ratings. It was basically him and Elliott each and every single season just being good at road courses. He has three wins, which is tied for second most was alone in second until last year when Kyle Larson absolutely dominated. But, you know, some of that could be attested to him just having 
by far the best car. We know things have certainly changed so far this year. So Truex, 9,700 bucks. I think he's a cash play. I think he's a tournament play. Not 100% sure if I'm gonna get there in cash games, because again, I wanna, I wanna try to get Chase Elliott in, but Truex right here starting in 17th. If I could fit him in and probably Byron at $9,300, that is very, very appealing. But I do like Truex in all aspects. does project pretty well. Austin Cindric, $9,500. He's starting in 10th. I think he's one of the best tournament plays in the entire slate because he is priced right in between a chalk sandwich of Martin Truex and William Byron here. So I don't think a lot of people are going to get the Austin Cinder because, again, you got to assume pairing one of the, or two of these drivers in Truex and Byron with a big name like Chase Elliott, Larson, or Kyle Busch, you're going to run out of money pretty quick if you happen to go that route. So I don't think Cinder's going to be played too much. And if you're just looking at numbers, I mean, in the few Cup Series starts he's had at road courses, we're talking 2.4 DraftKings points races with an average finish of 24th. But don't let these numbers fool you. Austin Cindric is a very good road course driver, and there's a reason he's in the top five in odds in Vegas to win this race. The guy absolutely killed him in the Xfinity Series. Then a mechanical issue with the one race, which he was leading. So, I mean, the speed's certainly there. He's in a Penske car. Did finish eighth at the Indy Robo. Did win it in the Xfinity Series. I mean, I know the price is up there, and people are not going to want to play Cindric. I would imagine he's going to be under 15% ownership. I this the practice just ended in qualifying so i've not yet ran my numbers but i just have to assume that cindric's not going to get much ownership especially where he's priced and where these other guys are so i love him in tournaments just as a low on play not a guy where i'm going to play like 40 percent of but if i could be double the field on cindric let's say he's 10 percent owned playing 20 percent is some pretty pretty good leverage for a guy that could win this race william byron 9300 bucks Starting in 24th, if you're looking at his numbers last year at the road courses, it was not pretty. 7.2 DraftKings points per race with an average finish outside the top 20. But you got look at that running position. It was pretty good. 12.3 running position, which is not too far from guys like Joey Logano, not too far from Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch. Like, he's actually a pretty solid road course racer. It just, he has some very terrible luck, and he has several wrecks, which really skews some of his numbers. Looking at the actual finishes here. 29th at Indy, 30th at the Road America, 20th at Sonoma. Like, he is not that bad of a driver. The races he did finish, 11th, 6th, 10th. And I mean, looking at his overall career numbers at road courses, again, it's not going to look pretty because some of these numbers are quite skewed. But does have five top 10 finishes, running position inside the top 13. Starting in 24th, 9300 bucks for a Hendrick car. I will take that all day, I would assume. For me, he's going to find his way into my cash game lineup. Maybe Truex bumps him out, but I'd have a hard time seeing Byron not slot into my cash boat as of right now because that price point is very very cheap joey logano ninety one hundred dollars starting in six kind of a summer play to denny hamlin where it's just gonna be hard to click on his name if you're hand building because they don't start as far back as some of those other big names and i just feel like they're gonna finish a little bit better but he is cheap at ninety one hundred dollars i will give him that and the guy is pretty good at road courses that have three top fives at them last season four top tens and did have some lap sled as well and some of those numbers did get skewed with some issues i mean 30th at indy 21st at watkins Glen, but finishes of third last season at coda which i hate to put too much in the coda last season because it was an absolute monsoon but fourth at sonoma sixth at charlotte i think logano is actually a pretty decent tournament play because i'm hoping a lot of people won't click on his name but i mean we have a pretty large sample size of joey being pretty good at road courses 23 race sample size eight top fives 13 top tens pretty good overall numbers I wouldn't mind taking some steps on a pretty cheap Joey this weekend. And rounding out our 9K group, we have Chris Bell at $9,000. Starting in 7th, again, I hate to keep saying it, but he's a very similar player to Joey Legano Denny Hammon in terms of starting position, and they have somewhat similar upside. And he's got pretty good odds at Vegas, plus 600 to win. I mean, that's better than Joey Legano. That's right on par with Denny Hamlin. Like The guy's a pretty good road course racer. Did win the Daytona Rovo last year. They'd have a couple of top fives. Looking at the actual finishes, they have some races where his numbers got skewed a little bit with a 31st place finish at Indy. But that's when we had the, uh, <laughs> it was a disastrous race. If you guys watched Indy, it was just absolute pandemonium. But he's kind of similar to William Byron where he's got some really good finishes, but then some outliers are really skewing down his numbers. Like 31st Dakota, 22nd Sonoma, but then 2nd at Road America, 7th at Watkins Glen, and 7th at Charlotte. So I think Chris Bell just kind of in a summer spot to Lugano where he's a good turn of play that shouldn't have too much ownership just because of how he's priced. And he's not for you as much place differential as some of the other guys that he's priced in between. Dropping down to the 8K range, we have Chase Briscoe, $8,900. He is starting in 14th. And Briscoe, certainly on my radar, he's got some pretty good odds in Vegas. The same as Christopher Bell, the same as AJ Allmendinger, the same as Danny Hamlin. So the upside is certainly there for him. I mean, he was a good road course racer. He's been very, very fast so far to start the season, which hopefully some of that speed will translate into this weekend. So with that 14 place starting spot, I could definitely play him in tournaments. Probably not going to get there in cash games at that price point. I'd much rather play AJ Allmendinger, but 
I can definitely get behind some Chase Briscoe. Hopefully that speed does translate over once again, which he has been pretty fast in most races this year. AJ Allmendinger, 8,800 bucks. He's starting in 20th. I would imagine he's going to be some pretty heavy chalk here. Did win a road course last season at Indy, and the guy's just a road course ringer, and he's in the 16 car this season with Colleague Racing, and we know that definitely has at least a little bit of juice in it. And it's not like equipment matters much at road courses anyway, so the dinger here below 9K with a 20-place starting spot. The PD's there. The upside, they even wins there. I wouldn't be shocked if he gets a top 5, top 10 finish, and I will take that all day at that price point, so love the dinger in all formats. Alex Bowman, 8600 bucks. He is starting in fifth. Not a bad road course racer. Did have four top tens in seven races last year at road courses. The problem is he's starting fifth, and it's so hard to click on Bowman's name over guys like AJ Allmendinger, Chase Briscoe, and even below him, you have Chas Reddick or Kevin Harvick that have similar upside to Alex Bowman. So it's it's really tough to get there. He is purely a very low-owned tournament player, probably going to come in below 10% ownership. So if you're just looking for darts for a guy that can stay within the top five and potentially win the race, the upside is there for it. But I think he's going to be more of like a 6th to 12th place car more so than like a 2nd to 7th place car. And Tyler Reddick here, 8400 bucks. He's starting in fourth. Another guy that has a ton of speed this season. And so Alex Bowman did have four top tens last year in seven races, but also had a top five finish. Problem is he is starting very high up, so it's hard to get there. But summon to Bowman, he's a very low owned tournament play. I think he's going to be a little bit higher on than Bowman just because Reddick has shown plenty of upside so far this year with speed. And people just like playing Tyler Reddick. I know him in the same boat. They're very similar plays. Starting one spot further up, though, Reddick's going to have to hold his ground and finish in the top three, which is possible. The chances are slim, but I do think he's worth a few lineups if you're building uh, 20 or 150 this weekend. Then two easier guys to land on. You have Ross Chastain, 8,200. He is starting 16th. He has been on fire this year. Three straight races in a row where he is in the optimal lineup. Not sure if it's going to be four in a row here, but this price point's not bad. He was actually pretty good at road course races last year. Did have three top tens and a top five. Kind of similar numbers to Bowman and Tyler Reddick. But with the extra added PD upside, so I can definitely get behind playing a good chunk of Ross Chastain this weekend. Then you have Kevin Harvick, $8,000, which is very cheap for him at a road course. I mean, back in the day, Kevin Harvick was a guy you'd always want to try to get some exposure to at road courses, but that has kind of declined. You can see that in the Vegas odds, plus 7,000 to win, which, I mean, compared to everybody else in this price range, he is way far off. And, you know, it makes sense. I mean, if you look at the numbers last year, like, he's not the worst out there, but 20th at Charlotte, 12th at Indy, which was fine, 8th at Watkins Glen, but then 26th, 21st, 30th, he's just... Whether it be bad luck or not, I mean, he's been spinning a lot, it seems. I feel like every real course race these days, you just see Kevin Harvick spinning at some point when the camera pans. So we'll see what happens. I mean, if you look at his career numbers, yeah, they're pretty good. 13 top 10s, which is up there with some of the most. So like, he's fine starting in 18th, but I would much rather get the chance staying because I like the speed that he's shown this year. Not that Kevin Harvick's been bad or anything. It's just I've had some bad mem recent memory with Kevin Harvick at road courses. Dropping out of the 7K range, Kurt Busch, $1,700. He's starting in 11th. Kind of in a weird spot where he doesn't offer you too much PD upside, but I'm going to be playing some Kurt Busch either way, just solely because of the finishing position upside. I mean, if you look at his numbers last year, 12.1 average finish, which is pretty good compared to most of these drivers that have four top 10s and two top fives, which is you know on par with guys like Alex Bowman, Tyler Reddick, Ross Chastain. But he's a little bit cheaper than that. Does offer a little bit more PD upside, not as much as Chastain, but more than Reddick and Alex Bowman. And he's just one of the better overall career road course racers. And if you're looking at his 23 race sample size, second most DraftKings points per race at 41, one of the best average finishes inside the top 10, actually only behind the GOAT Chase Elliott, one of the best running positions, seven top fives, 15 top tens. Like some guys are just good at road courses, and Kurt Busch is one of those guys, and he's actually been one of the better Toyotas so far this season. So I can definitely get behind some Kurt Busch. Brad Keselowski, $7,600. He is starting back in 26th, and well, on paper, it looks pretty good. I just, I don't want to play Brad Keselowski. I'm probably going to because it's hard to get away from where he's starting. But I just feel like he could be one of those guys that starts in the back, but he's also kind of stuck in the back. I mean, last year he had one top 10 finish out of seven races, three top 15s, five top 20s. So, I mean, he's probably going to finish inside the top 20. I mean, it's an equipment downgrade this year, getting away from Team Penske. But, again, equipment doesn't really matter too much at road courses. It's just at non-plate races, he's been so slow this year. So it's very hard to trust him. I mean, look at the actual finishes last year, 18th, 21st, 28th. Did have a good run in Road America with a 12th place finish, but it's just really hard to get to a lot of Keselowski because it's hard to trust that car this year. 
And I think he's going to pick up some ownership just because of the place differential upside. But I'd rather play Eric Jones than I would Brad Keselowski if it came down to it. I mean, last year, road courses, I mean, you know, Eric Jones was in a much worse car, but nearly 36 DraftKings points race with an average finish nearly inside the top 15. Six top 20s, kind of slimmer numbers as far as top 10s and top 15s go. But Eric Jones has had a much faster car than Brad Keselowski has had this season. So they're both fine PD plays. But if I had to pick between the two, I would side with Eric Jones. He also has better odds over in Vegas. Then Chris Busher, $7,300. I mean, kind of in a similar spot to his team, Brad Keselowski. But again, I almost prefer Chris Busher over Brad Keselowski. I know he's starting four spots further up. But last year at road courses, you could trust Chris Busher. He had an average finish around 12th place. Had top five, several top 15s. And if you look at over the course of his career at road courses, it's not the worst out there. It's a 20 race sample size. Average finish inside the top 20. Two top fives, eight top 15s, and 17 top 20s. So, I mean... You're typically always going to see Chris Buescher finishing inside the top 20 road courses. The price isn't too bad. I think he's going to be a little bit less owned than Brad Keselowski. Again, have not yet ran my numbers, but I think I'd have to take Chris Buescher if it came down to it between him and Brad Keselowski. Daniel Suarez, $7,100, pretty cheap over on FanDuel. The only, he was fast in practice. Like If you really care about practice, which you know I'm not putting too much into it, but if a guy is fast, it is at least nice to see. And he was... He was very fast in practice, faster than I thought he would be. But these track house cars, they've been really, really fast this year. So it's hard to ignore. Was second on the one lap over in practice last year at road courses. Really a lot of bad luck. It wasn't really his fault. I feel like every single race, his engine just broke. So we'll see what happens this year. But it seems like track house is bringing a lot of speed. So I'm willing to look past these very awful numbers that he had last season. And if you look at his kind of career arc at road course, it does a little bit better. But man, last season did skew those numbers pretty heavily. But he's got nine top 20s, five top 15s. The problem is where he's starting in second, there is virtually no upside here. I mean, I was looking at his heat map earlier. For him to get 30 points, he needs to finish in the top eight, which is certainly possible. But once you start thinking about guys like Elliot Larson Bush, like you're starting to run out of spaces for guys that can finish in the top 10. And I just can't really put Suarez above them. Like, he might be able to hang, but I would say there's a very, very high likelihood he is going to lose several spots in this race, and that's just not going to be optimal. So he, if you want to play him based off the speed, you can if you think he can hold his ground and win the race, but I am I would be taking an underweight approach on Daniel Suarez. Austin Dillon, $7,000. He's starting in 21st. Really not the best road course racer out there. Wasn't awful last year. Was actually able to have five top 15s, which was which was pretty uncharacteristic from Austin Dillon because if you're looking at his career numbers, we're talking about an average finish outside the top 20. So at least nice to see that he, you know, he made at least some progress. So hopefully that translates into this season. And you know, if that's going to be the case, starting 21st at 7,000 bucks, if he's going to give me top 15 upside, 12th at Coda last year, 10th at Road America, 13th at Sonoma, those are technical road courses. Even well, 14th at Charlotte, that's more of a that's a roval, but 14th at the Glen. I mean, those are solid numbers. So I don't really hate Austin Dillon here at 7,000 bucks dropping down to the 6k range Ricky Stenhouse Jr. 6,900 bucks looking like he'll pick up some ownership once again I mean just keeps starting in the back but thing with thing is with him at road courses it's not really his bread and butter I mean he had four top 20s at them last year ninth at Indy 11th at Road America it's just really not the best road course racer out there but if you're just looking for some cheap PD Ricky Stenhouse is fine but I wouldn't be overly thrilled about it Justin Haley, $6,800. He's starting in ninth. Was good at the road courses last year in the Xfinity Series. They finished seventh at Indy last season in a much worse car, but you got to keep in mind Indy was an absolute just carnival, so I'm not going to look too much into it. But Haley starting ninth, it, I mean, it makes it tough to want to play him. He's got better odds to win this race than Stenhouse, Eric Amarillo, Bubba Wallace, kind of on par with the Michael McDowell, Cole Custer, Kaz Grala crowd. I think Haley's okay, but I'm not, I'm not super excited about it because he's – more than likely going to lose spots. So I can't see myself playing too much Justin Haley. As bad as Eric Amarola, but Wallace and those kind of guys are road courses, I'd, I feel like I'd rather just play them because they can luck their way into a top 15, I think, better than Justin Haley can luck his way into a top five. But if Haley holds his ground, like a top 12, it's not a bad day, but I don't think it's going to be an optimal kind of day. But Amarola, but Wallace, both pretty similar plays here. Both guys just really aren't that good at road courses. Yeah, they can kind of limp into the top 20, top 15. And if there's some attrition and spin outs, yeah, they can certainly get there. But they're not exciting plays. They're just boring PD plays where you're going to have to hope that they kind of get lucky into a top 20, top 15. And that's pretty 
much as far as I can go on those two. I'd rather play Michael McDowell here, 6,200 bucks. He's starting in 27th. I imagine he ends up being a very, very chalky, just cheap PD play. He's, he's always been pretty solid at the road courses. Wasn't amazing at them last year. He had two top 10s, but overall he's kind of been a hit or miss. 15th at the Roval, then a really rough four race stretch of 27th, 20th, 28th, 24th. Was seven with Dakota last year, but overall, I mean, average running positions had the top 20 with 12 top 20s. I, I mean, I think he's just a fine, cheap PD play. A lot cheaper on DK than he is on FanDuel. Custer is starting too high for me to play him. I just I just can't do it. I can't see him holding a top three. I'd rather play the cheap PD guys down here like Rala, Burton, Gillen, LaJoy. I just think there's more upside there. So probably just going to be a pass on Custer. If Custer's in the optimal lineup, I lost money, but I just don't see it happening. 5K range, Grella, I liked him. I talked about in the Osmo video. Did uh, fill in for awesome deal when he had COVID a couple years ago, just out of the blue and ended up finishing inside the top 10. I want to say it was the Daytona Roval, but he's back. We haven't seen him since the Daytona 500. He's with the money team. Uh, they're making very select races this year. 26 in the one-half in practice, not anything amazing. But for where he's starting, I, I think he's got some road course talent. I mean... I know he was in the three car when he ran it, so it's obviously better, but you know, Quinn's not really too big of a deal here. I don't know why I'm scrolling, we have no numbers to look at, but I think Growlers running in 31st is fine. Probably not gonna get there in cash because Michael McDowell's there, three hundred dollars more. I'd feel safer with him, but I think Growl is an overall very solid play. Harrison Burton, fifty eight hundred bucks, starting nineteen. It's gonna be hard to get to him just because everybody else here offers you more PD upside, so we'll have low ownership. But I I'm probably not gonna play much Burton. Gillen won Coda in the truck series last year, $5,600 starting in 29th. That should bump his ownership up a little bit, assuming people talk about that. Obviously, nothing impressive in practice, but I mean, Gillen's fine. It is plus 20,000 compared to these other guys being 30 and 50,000 and 100,000 like Joey Hands. So at least the odds are a little bit better there. Uh, LaJoy, just a fine, cheap PD play. I mean, looking at his road course numbers last year, it's not like it was anything super impressive running position around. 22nd place like he'll he'll probably gain spots the other day if there is attrition i mean he's just gonna lock box his way into a top 25 maybe a top 20 depending on how the race goes but he's fine andy lolly is starting the very back did not make a qualifying run he's actually got to do a pass through penalty to start the race but these laps are over two minutes long he's don't i don't think he's gonna lose a lap here not like it matters anyway but he's starting dead last if you you want to throw him on some laps he can't hurt you so i think lolly's fine but i'm not excited about it Ty Dillon, 5,100 bucks, starting in 33rd. Looking at his career numbers of road courses, we have a 13 race sample size, averaging just over 25 DraftKings points raised with an average finish around 24th, 25th with a few top 20s. Like, it's fine. I mean, he's starting so far back where, yeah, he's probably going to gain spots, assuming some other stuff happens to other drivers. I mean, top 30 should be in the cards, and he's dirt, dirt cheap. Joey Hand's a guy that I think will pick up some ownership just because he was actually decently fast in practice, was P14 in the one lap. Starting all the way back in 38th, you know, these guys that are just cheap down here, pretty much just road course ringers. And looking at his career numbers, we have one race in the Cup Series, 24 DraftKings points, finished 27th, running position around 28th place. He's starting 38th. Like, there's a decent chance he can get a top 30. Don't hate Joey Hand, even though it's a Rick Ware racing car, but again, equipment, not too big of a deal here. Then these 4K bums, we got Josh Balicki. I don't hate Josh Balicki starting at 34th. I think he's a pretty summer play to Corey LaJoy, but he's around $500 cheaper. So do this with the lower own guy there. I think Balicki's fine. Cody Ware, 35th, $4,800. Again, you you don't really want to play these guys. They all sucked in practice, like 36, 37, 38, 39. These were the four slowest guys in practice and they're the four cheapest guys. So they're down here for a reason. If you're playing them, you're really just hoping for a lot of chaos to where they can kind of lock their way in the top 30s. Cody Ware last year did have three top 30 finishes, so it's not like it's impossible him for him to be a decent play, but it's really hard for me to like Cody Ware too much. Uh, Boris Sed's back, $4,700. He is starting 37, so pretty close to last. Seven Cup Series races, 22 DraftKings points for race average finishes at the top 30. Like, he could get there, but again, these guys are going to be slow, and they're probably going to need to have attrition for them to end up being optimal. But with that being said, I think that'll be it for the video. So if you found this helpful in any way possible, informational, entertaining, or whatever it may be, leave it a like and go a very long way. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already. I'll be here all season long, breaking down each and every single slate. And I'll also be doing MLB within the next couple of weeks. So a lot to be excited about. And if you wanna check out the Patreon, like I said, you can get this last weekend for free. I will refund one of the charges for you so you don't get double charged with lots of extra content over there. And make sure to check out the sponsor, Price Picks. You can head over to pricepicks.com. Use the link down below and get a free instant deposit match bonus up to $100.
We're going to use code CPEN and it can help us both out. Follow me on Twitter if you want it, Chris Pinnell 16, CPEN 16 over on IG, but I think that'll be pretty much it. I wish you all the best of luck this weekend, and I'll see you on Sunday for the live stream.